on high, on high, on high, on high. We lift your name. We lift your name. No one like you. No other God. No other name. No other name. No other name. Only you. Only you. Only you. King of kings. Lord of lords. We give you praise. You deserve it. Oh, God of all the earth, living God, living God, the true and the living God, the true and the living God, the true and the living God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the beginning and the end. The bright morning star, the firstborn from the dead. He said, I was dead, but behold, I am alive. I live forever. The everlasting, the ancient of days, the one who holds everything in his hands, the one who speaks the ends from the beginning. The one who holds everything together. That's your God. That's your God. That's the one you came to worship. The one you present himself today. It's your God. The living God. The maker of heaven and the earth. Hallelujah. The true God. We lift your name on high. We bless your name. We worship you. We praise you. We give you praise, honor to you, glory to you. Majestous you are, glorious you are, everlasting. You know no hands, no limits. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. Oh, there is no one like you. Not a God made with man's hands. He lives by himself. He exists by himself. He wasn't voted, so he will not be coop. He will not know coop. Mm -mm. They will not overthrow him. Mm -mm. He doesn't need majority to exist. He is God by himself. He is God by himself. We praise your name this morning. It's you that we came to meet. Speak to our hearts. Bless your words. Send the living words. Let your word shape us. Let your word form us, transform us. Yes, let your words made a path for us today, a way for us. Thank you for sending your words. They say he sent his word and his words healed them. Heal someone today. Change someone's mentality today. Hallelujah. Renew the mind of someone today. Sharpen someone today. The double-edged sword. Thank you. For your words thank you for your people thank you for your presence holy spirit glorify jesus speak to our hearts i pray that the heart of your people the heart of rock be changed in the heart of flesh in the name of jesus that the heart of your people will be like a fertile soul when your words like a seed will bear fruits hundreds fruit that will last and we will see it with our eyes. Fruits, 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 fruits. We will see the change. We will see the fruits. Your word is alive and powerful. Yes, and God said, and it was. And God said, and there is. And God spoke. Let there be light. And there was light. Thank you, Father. 
speak to your people. Use me just like a tool. I surrender totally my thoughts, my words, nothing from the flesh, nothing from myself, but you alone, Holy Spirit, take over. Glorify Jesus in this place. No other spirits, but the Spirit of God. Where there is the Spirit of God, there is freedom. Thank you for your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Can you clap for the Lord? I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Can you clap for the instrumentist? Did you notice that they don't sing? They don't dance? They are just focused on the instrument so that you can sing and you can dance, you can praise. Can you clap for them again? Can you clap for the choir? It's not easy to come here early. They are here early, all of those people. May God bless them. They practice after 7 p.m., 8 p.m. when you are, you are watching uh, Muvango. It's my city, Bollywood. They are practicing here. Amen. Can you clap for the usher? They come early. When you come, they greet you. They were here before you. They wake up early. Can you clap for the media, the technical? All the workers. You know, things doesn't happen by itself, huh? Yes, we need workers in the fields. And we praise God for the workers in the fields. All the workers of La Bonne Church, we appreciate you. We bless God for your life. We don't pay you. You know, in other churches, they make advertisement. We are looking for someone to play. Then this is what they're going to pay you. As we don't pay, but they come day after. Can you clap for the workers of La Bonne Church? God bless you. Remember you. May God point you, point you, point you, point you, and remember you. Thank you, Lord. I praise God for the breath of life over my life and the strength to stand here. Only Him can do it. Amen. Acknowledge our pastor, our mentor, the angel of the house, for the trust once more. I was saying it's not by sentiment. He can see and he does things in spirit. And I thank God for the committee of the church and all of you who made it this morning. Can you clap for yourself? So we just hope that we're going to get to the end because of Lord Shading. Can we raise our hands and bless South Africa for one minute? May God bless, bless South Africa. Let's stop to complain. The days that are coming ahead are greater than the day behind. South Africa is not going down. May God bless South Africa. May God remember South Africa. And help with the Lord shedding in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you quickly open our Bible in Isaiah 54, verse 2? I'm going to read verse, uh, f- uh, chapter 54, verse 2 and 3. As my message is more the verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent. I'm reading in Jesus' name. Stretch your ten curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. New Living Translation say, Enlarge your house. Build an addition. Spread out your home and spare no expense. Easy English say, make your tent bigger. 
Open your doors wide. Don't think small. Don't think small. Make your tent large and strong because you will grow in all directions. You will grow. We know that's the year of conquest, right? And God wants us to conquer, to win, to take territory, to expand. Hallelujah. It's not a rhetoric. It's not just something we are saying. It's the truth. Hallelujah. We won't stop telling you that. We will tell you again and again until you stand, until you move, until you step up, until you do something, until you act and conquer. Hallelujah. There are a few months left, I was saying, the God who made the universe in six days can still change your story. Yes, you can still put your life in his hands. You can still hope. Hallelujah. God wants you to prosper. But there is a part for you to play. Hallelujah. There is a part. God has said, I've given you the land. We read it in numbers in the beginning of the year. He spoke. He gave the promise. But you will need to stand. You will need to step up. You will need to do something to conquer. You will have to fight. I don't know what is it that you have to conquer in your life. You have different lists. I don't know if you even have a list. I don't know even if you pray about it. I don't know if and even you, you think about it every day. I don't know even if you're moving toward it every day. But there is probably something that you want to conquer this, this year. I don't know if it is a new job, a new position. I don't know if you are tired of renting, you want to buy a house. I don't know if you want to resign finally from that company and start to give yourself 100% to that business. Hallelujah. You know what you need to conquer. I don't know if you need to study more to further your study. You are probably outdated. Amen. What you're doing, whatever you are doing, there is always something out there, new technology, new way of doing things that you need to learn to upskill yourself. I was saying, even if you are a mechanic, nobody's spare. There's new car, new technology to, to know how to fix them. You will have to upskill, update yourself. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's to register to a college, to university. Actually, you came here for that, but you have been doing all the stuff. You have been doing, you have found yourself, I don't know. Did you find yourself in a, um, a marriage? I don't know. Did you find yourself uh, uh, doing a job? I don't know. You came here to study. It was in your list. But it's still possible. You can still register to that college. I don't know what you are scared of. Is it the funds to finance your study? Is it the time? You don't have time because you need to, put to, to have your job and you study. You have to step up. And do something. Maybe you are just scared that you won't be. It's been a long time. You are not enough intelligence to finish. Hallelujah. But it's going to be okay. Amen. You're going to make it. You're going to conquer. But you will have to stand and do something. Maybe it's your health. You are on medication. You know, the doctor appointment, it's you. The whole thing for a long time. Everybody knows at home, this is mommy's medication. This is daddy. You know that is your time. I don't know. Maybe you need to say enough is enough. And to conquer, you will have to do something about it. But all of us have something to conquer. All of us have something to conquer. And I was saying the promise was for everybody. Amen. The promise came out. The promise was given to the people of Israel at that time. Hallelujah. And this morning we also have a promise in the verse that we are reading today. In verse 3, the Bible says, For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Hallelujah. This is the promise. You will. Hallelujah. It's a promise. You will. God himself says so. You will spread out to the left, to the right. He says so, so you will. God is not a man to lie. He's not a son of man to change his mind. When he says something,
something, you will do it. What his mouth speaks, his hands can fulfill it. You will spread out to the left and to the right. You will expand, you will grow, you will prosper, you will possess. That's the promise. But you will have to do something about it. Hallelujah. The verse 2 is now telling us what you need to do to get to the verse 3. To spread out to the left, to the right. Verse 2 is telling us what you're saying. I was saying in the morning, I'm sorry to tell you, but not all of us will conquer this year. Sorry. Not all of us will see, touch, grow, possess. Not all of us. Only those who will act upon the promise. The promise was given to the people of, of Israel, but only Caleb and Joshua possess the land. Only Caleb and Joshua. God said, Caleb had another spirit. In French, he said, Caleb était animé d'un autre esprit. He thought differently. He acted differently. He took my promise as cash. He believed it. He acted on it. He spoke different. Caleb, because my servant has a different spirit and follows, with, yes, follows me with all his heart, I will bring him into the land and his descendants will possess it or inherit it. Nothing new under the sun. Ecclesia has to say. You think that is new? Nothing new. What was will happen again. What is happened in the past. The Bible said that those things were written to teach us. They were written for our example. They were written for our good. But it's still happening. People are, people are still receiving promises and not seeing anything, nothing new under the sun. It still happened. It happened yesterday. It's still happening today. If you don't move, you don't stand, you don't act, you will not see the promise. The prophecy came out for everybody. Why, God? Because you have your part to play. Hallelujah. Today I want to touch this verse 2 in our lives. You know, I like to be practical. In our finances, in our family, in our church as well. Hallelujah. A little bit of background. The text today in Isaiah was a prophecy. Hallelujah. It is a prophecy that came in a time where Israel has no hope. They were in exile. It was a difficult time, a time of rejection, a time of exile, a time of barrenness. You can see it in verse 1. A time of wilderness, a time of shame, a time of disgrace, a time of humiliation, a difficult time, a time of wilderness. But thank God, God spoke. Hallelujah. In the midst of the status quo, that famine, that barrenness, thank God a prophecy came out. God spoke. You will spread out. Don't worry, barren woman. You will sing. You can even start to sing. God has promised to change the situation. Hallelujah. God's say that it's not going always to be like this. Change is coming. Things will change. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through. You think there is no hope. It's a time of statu quo. Nothing is changing. No, nothing new. You are tired of your life. But God has spoken. Hallelujah. God has given a prophecy. Things are, are about to change in your favor. Do you believe it? Hallelujah. Take heart. Don't give up. In the midst of that famine, that desolation, God has spoken. He has given a promise. Hallelujah. 
God wants to change things in your life. But like I say again, you will have to step up. You will have to do something about it. He said, enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge means make or become larger, more extensive, increase in size, in volume, extend, broaden, expand. Hallelujah. Make more rooms, more space. Hallelujah. It means also you need to see big. Don't see just what is now. Don't see just what is happening now. Don't see just your difficulty. Don't see just how impossible is it. But you will have to enlarge your tent. You will have to see big. How big? Big as your God is. Hallelujah. Your God is big. We sing it here. But when it's about our daily life, we don't confess it. Hallelujah. We can dance over those words, but we don't confess it. See big. Don't have a short sight. See far. Your God is big. I like to say to myself, I believe in a God who gives cities to men. Not a house, not a building, but cities. Uh, what is that king? Cyprus. He said, the, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and asked me to build for him a temple. A pagan king. Who has given you God? When David conquered the city, that first city, I think we read it last time. They call it the city of David. And I say to myself, I believe in a God to give cities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See big. Hallelujah. Some people, when they think about the end of their life, they think about buying a house, a nice car. That's the end. Me, I believe in a God to give cities. I will be giving houses, cars. Hallelujah. I see big. You will have to see it. You stop there. My life is there. I believe the way my God is, the way I believe. Hallelujah. God is willing to bless you, but it depends on your capacity. Make capacity. Make room. Hallelujah. Genesis 13, 14, 15 say, The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot has parted for him, Look around from where you are to north and south to east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. New Living Translation says, look as far as you can see in every direction. North and south, east and west. I'm giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendant as permanent possession. He repeated twice, as far as as you can see. As far and you can see what we be, you believe God to do, he will do just as you believe. I cannot give you what you don't see. God will tell you. As far as you can see. Enlarge your capacity. Remember the story with the widow with her oil. The oil stop when the container stop. Finish. More container, more oil. More container, pouring of oil. No more container. The oil stop. Think about your capacity. I hope as I'm speaking, you are thinking. Hallelujah. I hope as I'm thinking, you are starting to change the way you see things. It's going to be done to you according to what you see. Enlarge. Enlarge your tent. Make for more capacity. How do you do that? The first continue. Stretch. Stretch your tent curtain. Make it wide. Hallelujah. Your tent curtain. Don't wait to have more. Don't wait for something else. Just where you are. Stretch it. 
Hallelujah. Where you are, what you have, don't wait for a bigger one. I need a bigger tent so that I can put more. No, start where you are. Stretch it. I was saying I should have bring an elastic here. It's the same word in English, right? To see you are, you stretch it. It's small, but start to stretch it. You will be amazed. It's just here. But now start to stretch it. You will see how it expands. Hallelujah. But it's tension. You think that it's going to break. You won't break, but you have to stretch. You won't die, but you will have to stretch. Hallelujah. It requires effort. Hallelujah. You have to stretch. Stretch, it's an action verb. You have to do something. Expand, it's an action verb. You have to do something. It can be uncomfortable, but you have to stretch. It can be painful, but you have to stretch. Hallelujah. Stretch is to make it wider, longer. Stretch. Hallelujah. Stretch. You won't die. You won't break. But it can be uncomfortable. In your finances, you will have to stretch. It will be uncomfortable. But if you want more, you will have to stretch. I was saying when a big company wants to expand its activity, to increase its visibility, they will roll out stores and shops everywhere. Hallelujah. They see expansion. They will have to open shops. I was saying that in our, in our area, we have a lot of development happening. Complex houses. It looks like nothing is uh, empty anymore. They are building and they are building. Spa is opening. Pick and pay is opening. Woolworth is opening. They are stretching. It's as for resources. It's spending more money. But they know that they will have more sell, more customer, more revenue. But first, they need to make the decision to stretch, to expand. It's uncomfortable. It's minus. But they see the future. They want to conquer. They want to be everywhere. Those customers, I, want, I need to have them. They are mine. Hallelujah. Ah, pick and pay is there. I'm also there. I'm coming. It's not only pick and pay. Hallelujah. It asks for more staff, more resources, more training, more building. That is spending. They are stretching for the future. Hallelujah. I was saying in 2019, I remember we went to Joburg with my kids. And we went to a cafe. And my daughter told me, Mommy, look, it's Starbucks. It's an American chain. I didn't know that it was here. It's Starbucks. I didn't know about this. We just get there. Oh, we saw it on TV. It's here. That was 2019. But today we are 2022. We can see Starbucks everywhere in Cape Town. At that time, we didn't have that. What they are doing, they are stretching. They are conquering. Where are you coming from? From America. What are you doing here? We are conquering South Africa. Do we, do, do we not have cafe in South Africa? Oh, yes. But we want a place also here. Don't we have clothes uh, store in South Africa. Oh yes, but Zara, I'm also coming. I, I want to conquer South Africa. They are stretching, spending to conquer. I was saying during the COVID, people were staying at home and we see delivering services everywhere. And the shops start also to deliver. Now we have checkers with an app. In your house, you pay. They come to you. They say, customers are at home, so we need to stretch. We need to do something. Hallelujah. You don't stretch, you die. Hallelujah. You don't stretch, you will be extended. Hallelujah. You have to move. Pick and pay as an app. They're delivering at home. Wool off as an app. They're delivering at home. They are changing. As the environment is changing, they are also stretching. Hallelujah. A man of God say, if the money that you have is not enough for what you need, it is seed. Hallelujah. 
it is seeds. In farming, no seed, no sowing, no harvest. You cannot expect a big harvest if no seed. A farmer wake up in the morning, look at the fields, looking, where are my maize? Where are my tomatoes? Where are my potatoes? Sir, did you sow them? Uh, no. Why are you waiting for them? Uh, I thought that they were coming out of the ground by themselves. It's going to be called crazy, right? No. No seed, no harvest. No seed, no sowing, no harvest. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that that is truth. Something to change in your life, you will have to learn some principles. I was talking about stretching. And those principles, sometimes it's uncomfortable, brings tension. It will make you to do some efforts. But you see the future, hallelujah. There are same, same thing. I was saying I grew up in a church where we were not taught about this. But today we are teaching you. You sow crumbles, you will reap crumbles. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. What you sow, it's what you reap. You sow quints, you reap quints. No seeds, no harvests. Hallelujah. A man of God says prosperity doesn't only ask for prayer. You need to act. You need to do something. Hallelujah. It's the truth. It's principle. We learn it. We were two holes. Maybe you can start where you are young. You're a student. You don't have a wife. You don't have a husband. You are young. But you need to learn. The Bible says in uh, um, Genesis 8, 22, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. It's not you who will change things. Seed time and harvest. Hallelujah. You have to sow to harvest. You have to do something about it. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Easy version says the one who plants few seeds will have a small harvest. But the one who plants a lot will have a big harvest. You want your business to prosper. You will have to invest to sow your time knowledge, skill. You have to stretch. Hallelujah. You will have to invest in innovation, renovation. Hallelujah. You will have to do something. It will cost you. It's the price to pay to grow and to prosper. You want to give more to God? Start where you are. Don't say to us, eh? when I will have Ah, those things is nothing here. You don't have those old stuff. Wait. When I will have, I have the promise of being a millionaire. Ah, when I will have. No. Hallelujah. Start where you are. Your ten rent faithful. Hallelujah. Giving it. Start where, and God will prosper you. God will multiply. God will trust you with more. Hallelujah. That's how it starts. The price, there is a price to pay for expansion, to grow, to increase. You used to be an employee. You go to work, you are there, 9, 5 p.m., 4.55. No, 4.45. You're back. 4.50. You're ready. You're just waiting. <laughs> 5, you go. But when you will be your own boss, you won't do that. 5 a.m. you are there. 8 p.m. still there. 9 p.m. you will have to stretch. Hallelujah. Things have changed. If you want that business to succeed, you will have to stretch. It's going to be uncomfortable, but it's the price to pay to prosper. 
people. It's the price to pay to grow. It's the price to pay to expand. Ask my mama do what time her husband come back home. Hallelujah. He has to stretch. Amen. He has to stretch. In your family, you want to start saving. You will have to stretch. Cut on those expenses. Those takeaway, takeout, restaurants, those things. You will have to cut. It's uncomfortable. I'm coming from work. I'm tired. I don't want to cook. But you know that that's app that you're using to order food. The app itself, the food is more expensive than the show, the store. You need to pay the delivery fees. You need to pay the tip of the driver who will come to your home. And you do it again and again, but you want to save. No. You will have to go to the store, buy food for a week, cook during the weekend for the whole week because you want to save and you will have to stretch. It's uncomfortable. You're tired. You're cooking the whole Saturday. You're cooking late in the night, but you want to save. It won't be easy. You will have to stretch. Hallelujah. No more nail every week, ladies. No more hair every week. You want to save, isn't it? You will have to stretch. Hallelujah. Learn to do it by yourself. Hallelujah. Learn, learn to make it nice to last a, a little bit for two weeks. Because you say that you want to save money. Hallelujah. I remember when I decided to start to send something to my parents. And I went to Western Union. I said, okay, how much I want to send $200? They say, this is this. Administration fees and everything. I say, ha! <laughs> I cannot afford that. Ha, I wanted to do it, but ha, no. I wanted to give up. But I understand I have to stretch. Hallelujah. I decided, uh -uh, no more waxing, no more nails, no more thing. Uh -huh. That's what <laughs> happened. You change the way you do things to achieve something. Hallelujah. And I like God. You just start where you are. Just start where you are. I could not say 200, no. And now I can even do more because I started and God was pleased and is giving more to do more. Hallelujah. You will have to stretch. You see a girl with a nice shape, nice clothes, oh, good, good body, the cloth is nice. But you, you eat any hour, you eat after 10 p.m., you sit on the couch for four hours watching TV, six hours. Just envying a shape. You will have to stand up. You will have to stretch. You will have to change your habits, your diets. Hallelujah. You want to be fit. You will have to stretch. That's life. Nothing mahala. Nothing. You will have to stretch. I was saying in the first service, I used to run around. My, the beach is not far from my home, so I need to not run, walk. <laughs> and then I stopped. Two years ago, I stopped. Each time I'm, I do the stair here to go to the office, some people come with me. Can I talk to you? Okay, let's go. We go have as long as when we get to the office, I sit. I don't have breath anymore. I pray. Thank you, Lord. I said, what's wrong with me? The last time we went with my girl to, to visit a lady, she gave birth. She was living up there in the apartment. I met the stair to up there when we sit. We started to pray. I was out of breath. I was with my little girl. She told me, Mommy, that's not good. That's not good. And then I remember, oh, yeah, I used to. Hallelujah. <laughs> I went back to work again. You need to stretch. Hallelujah. I went back to do it again. You have to, it's painful. It takes your time. You prefer to be doing something else. You prefer to be working, but you have to do it for your good. You want to have a good heart. You want to live long. You have to stretch. Hallelujah. You are tired of renting, you want to buy. 
but you are just sitting there waiting for things to happen by itself. You didn't even go to a website where they say sell of house. You didn't even start there. Hallelujah. You didn't even speak to an agent and saying how. Oh. You didn't even talk to a bank. But you're just praying here. Just dreaming. Hallelujah. You have to stretch. You will have to stand up. I was saying in the first service that I was watching a pastor in London. He said that when the church was small, he, um, he was meeting members and he saw that they were living in um, difficult condition, bad night of London. And he was praying about it and he decided to stand up. He went to all the major bank of the city, asked for the forms and came back with the forms for the uh, loan for to get a house. And he said they start studying the requirements for all the banks. And they start teaching it to the members. How do you do that? Amen. You will not know. That's what, just what you are paying to rent can be your bond. Hallelujah. But you just let send it one day, one day you are 30, one day 40, one day 50, one day 60. Hallelujah. You are still renting. You will have to stand up. They say they just teach the, the, the members. They say you just have to show the bank for three months, four months, that you can save. Because what you're going to pay is not more, it's just what you are paying to your hands. But you need to show the bank your bank statements. So you need to hold on. I forget to, to, to check that. Your belt for a while. Say real assent you. Huh? Cut on those meats, cut on those coke, hallelujah. Maybe leave your car, the, the petrol is expensive, just for three months. Show the bank that you can save. They just let you just ask for three, four months of your bank statement, not your whole life. You, even, you don't even have a bank statement. You like cash. Eh? How are you going to buy that house? Amen. That's to open a bank say just what you pay as rent. Instead of, I remember when I was in a small apartment, I wanted to throw the males of our uh, landlord because it was too much. He was never coming to get them. And then I opened one because I wanted to see if it was important. And I said a statement from the bank where he's paying the bonds for the apartment. I realized that I was the one paying the bond for him. <laughs> Amen. So you envy people. You say, he, 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 I'm renting because he's rich. No, you are the one who's making him rich. Amen. You will, you will have to stretch to change your life. I, I'm, amen. You will have to stretch. I was talking to a sister. I was saying, in the first of it, you don't like the, 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 the school where your kids go to. But you just sit there. A bad school, bad influence. But you're just sitting. You're not knowing anything. You don't like the neighborhood where you are staying. Staying, You say it's not safe. It's not good for the kids to grow up. But you just stay sitting. Not doing anything about it. Hallelujah. You will have to stand up to stretch. I'm talking about family life. You will have to stand up, stretch. I was talking to a lady. She told me I wanted my kids to go to that school. I don't want the school here. It's not a good school. I want the school. And everybody around her discouraged her. Oh! Oh, don't bother. They don't take us. They don't take people. They don't like us. They will do this. She said, I want my kids in that school. She went there. She told me. They turn her around. Bring this. Bring this. She brought. Bring that. Bring this. She brought. She persevered. At the end, they took her child. Hallelujah. Yes, she conquered. When everybody said, no, impossible. Only <clears throat> go there. Hallelujah. But she did it because she stretched. They say they need a letter for a lawyer. I was saying, do you know that there are lawyers here who give themselves, you give up a few hours of their time just to help people for free? Especially us. Do you know that? You, they say they need a letter for a lawyer. Ah, no, that's, that's not, not, not this complicated. You don't even stand up, stretch, go figure out, take a taxi, go queue. In that thing, yes, it's free. You have to queue for a few hours. Yes, you need that letter, yes or not. Hallelujah. Wake up in the morning, stay in the queue. Don't just pray here. 
Father, send a letter. Father, a lawyer, seven. No. <laughs> I will meet a lawyer. I will meet. No. Stop that nonsense. Figure out how did you do that? I see that you did this. You were here with us. Now you are not here with us anymore. I see you change. What did you do? How did you do that? Ah, my sister, it's difficult. I will do it. Hallelujah. Q, go Q and get that later. Hallelujah. Do something to change your status quo. The, the promise came out, but you will have to move. As a church, I was saying, you are, we are comfortable in this place. We like the chair as we are here. After COVID, people are coming. So we have our own building. It's in town. Oh, nice. Hallelujah. If you want to expand, we will have to stretch. It's going to be more expensive. It's going to be more headache. But it's the price to, exp- to grow and to expand. Not to be just comfortable where you are. You have stayed enough in this mountain. Hallelujah. Break camp and stand. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? You have stayed enough in that situation. You have stayed enough. Break camp. You have starting to be comfortable. We praise God for where you are. But now, break camp and start to move. As a church to win the loss, we will have to go out of those four walls. They are outside. They are not inside. We will have to stretch. I was saying sometimes we go to preach the gospel in the parade and security chase our ass away. Don't come here. Do you have an authorization? This is part of stretching. You suffer to win the loss. The disciple could say, we praise God that they were beaten up for the cause, the sake of Christ. Are we still stretching and saying that? Today as a church, we are comfortable in our four walls. I remember we went to preach to a lady out there. She told us, you, you are lazy people, preaching people, uh, white people, God. She was judging us. We could be offended and say, eh, Christ, they're insulting me. <laughs> I won't do it anymore. But it's the price to pay to win the loss. Sometimes you talk to people on the street, they think that you want to ask them for money. They despise you. They look at you anyhow, but it's the price to pay. Hallelujah. If you want to follow me, Jesus say, pick up your cross and follow me. You want to, to invest in things in the kingdom of God, things that will never hurt, never um, um, uh, a pass in eternal things. You will have to stretch as a church. We will have to stretch. Go into nations and disciples. We need money. We will have to stretch. Some people here will need to sacrifice for us to be able to send a missionary. Hallelujah. You will have to stretch. You will have to stretch. I wanted to speak more about stretching. But the other thing that he said is lengthen your cords. It's also about beyond yourself. Lengthen your cords. Don't see only your own life. Don't see only under your nose. But think about others. Amen. Lengthen your cords. Don't only, it's not just only about you having your bread, your clothes, and your car. But live also for others. Hallelujah. Let your life be a blessing also for others. Lengthen your cords. Hallelujah. When you have for you faith, Father, it's not enough. I, want, I need more for others to bless all. You are blessed to be a blessing. That's a true child of God. We follow the example of Christ. He didn't live for himself. He, li- he lived here for all of us. Lengthen your coat. Hallelujah. Live when you do it to give an announcement for social outreach. You, you don't even care. It's not your business. You have eat your bread. Amen. You have your, your hoko mama. So the others there is their problem. Hallelujah. You don't even care. How can I make a difference? Hallelujah. I cannot, I cannot touch someone's lives. Hallelujah. How can I be a blessing for others? You need to lengthen your cords. It's not just about your family. 
Do you look at your neighbors? Do you look at that kids? Hallelujah. It's not, like, not, not just about your family. I was um, following a video if a guy is in the parliament or something here in South Africa. In the commission, I don't know what. He said that when he was 18, his father died. He needed to work so that uh, to provide for his mother and his little uh, sibling because he was the firstborn. But he wanted to go to university. And he applied, he got a bursary. But a mother looked at her and said, you need to walk, you need to stay, we need to eat every day. You're going for four years, how are we going to eat? He said, he went to a shop, it was a Muslim shop. He said to that guy, I will be coming back here to work for you, but can you please give my family money for food? The guy said to him, I will not give you food, I will give your mom every month a voucher so that she can come get groceries and get food come every month the guy was at peace he went to study came to a, a job I don't know why he studied for three years that guy gave a voucher to that mom every month for his shop Somalian shop Muslim he said after three years four years he came back he said to that guy my life is yours I will be your slave. I will work for you in your shop until you get all your money back. The guy said to him, what I did for you, go do it for others. It was for free. And he said, he was crying. A member of parliament, the commission, a, a papa, a big guy. He said, that's what I've been doing in my life since that day until today. Helping others. Can you see? Also understand, as Christians, we are not, mm -mm, we are not, we don't have compassion. Muslims are more compassionate than us. We think, lengthen your cords. That guy who didn't know him, it was a Somalian from the, Muslim from the, the neighborhood. He did it for him. He made a difference in a family for three years, giving every month food from your shop. But us, we are so selfish. Lengthen your cord. Psalm 112, 9. They have freely scattered the gifts to the poor. The righteousness endure forever. The horn will be lifted high in honor. You know some doors in your life will be open just because you are helping people. You will find yourself, people just helping you because they don't know you. But God knows you. Some doors will not be open with money. Some doors they just need favor. Because you have that habit to help people. Wherever you find yourself, you will just find something, people pushing you, helping you. Because you have that heart for others. Hallelujah. Let's change. Lengthen your code. Let's change the way we live our Christianity and our life. You pray only for yourself. You have it only to eat yourself. Hallelujah. I remember Papa Eric uh, gave a testimony. He says someone early in the morning, five o'clock, um, give him um, full tank. He paid for the full tank of his petrol. He doesn't know that guy. He just pay. He says someone today just pay for the full tank of my petrol. But do you know Papa Eric? He gave lift to people. Never say no. But that guy that morning didn't know about it. But God knew. Hallelujah. God knew. God knew. God sees everything. God sees everything. God will reward you. And when you help, stop complaining. Stop boasting. I helped you last month. You're coming again. No, please. <laughs> if you don't have, sorry, I had. But today, I don't. Amen? Yes. As a church, we need to think about all the people. Hallelujah. We don't think about going to the pygmy. I don't know what is pygmy in English. Anymore? We like ministry with likes and followers. Who will go for the ministry without pulpits? Without chairs? Without internet? 
in the forests. Strengthen your codes. Hallelujah. Young people, we need new callings. Hallelujah. We want, you just want the prophecy that, that you put on Facebook, on Twitter. They will see. I spoke about it in November 20. It's happened. I ah, yeah. come on. We need, we need diversity of callings now. Let's lengthen our codes as a church. Let's speak about to, to reach the unrich. Let's think about crazy stuff. Hallelujah for Jesus. Let's sacrifice. Hallelujah. Let's lend as a church. I was saying we have a lady in our church in Kinshasa who has a ministry toward the death. She learned the sign language. Difficult to learn. And now she's only preaching to the death. She brought them in a center. She created a center. She teach them profession so that they will not be beggar. You know, in Africa, when you have someone with a disability, automatically you become a beggar. But she's making a difference. She learned the sign language. She's preaching to them. She's showing them a, a profession, small profession, how to do the small things with, with wood, how to sew and everything so that they will not beg. She's making a difference. She lengthened her cords. Are we thinking about preaching the Bushmen? Yes, there's still Bushmen here in South Africa. Are we thinking going to the forest? Are we thinking about those things? Let us as a church to lengthen our cords. The third one is strengthen your stakes. Here, it's strengthen your stakes. It's the thing that you use in a tent to make the tent stable. Strengthen your stakes. Make it firm. Here I talk about your faith. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. As you are conquering, you need to conquer according to the instruction that you hear from God. Don't just follow the crowds. Don't just do like everybody's doing. Huh? Because it's fashion today, so we're conquering the side. It's the side. Today it's Bitcoin, so all of us it's Bitcoins. But God told you, no, you see, you it's farming. <laughs> God told you, no, you, he's talking to you about that plot. You're thinking about that plot of your father. You just think about that plot. Because everybody say Bitcoins, you, you also it's Bitcoins. But your breakthrough is in farming. Dangote started to sell rice. And sugar. Hmm? So as we are conquering, let's go with our faith, what with the word that we have from God. Everybody's doing business, business, praying for business. You also business, but you God said you no, no, you come to ministry. Amen. I'm not against business. He will show you business later. But the conquering that he wants for you now is to come to ministry. So don't just pray, conquer, conquer, because everybody's praying business, conquering, and you are not obeying to God. Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God, the instruction from God. What God has for you, hallelujah. Conquering is not only about money, it's also, also about fulfilling your destiny. You will only be happy when you find yourself being, doing what God uh, asks you or prepares for you. That's where you will grow, you will prosper. It's going to be easy for you. You are laboring, laboring, laboring where God is not waiting for. He doesn't see you there. But you are just praying, conquering, because we say conquering, everybody's going that side. So you also is that side. You need to conquer knowing the instruction of God, the faith in the word of God. Remember, in the land there is giants. It won't be easy. So for you to stand firm, no matter the time, the season, the storm, you will have to have a word from God. You will have to stand on your faith. Hallelujah. You will have to stand on what the will of God. That is what is will work. Hallelujah. It's important. Strengthen your stakes. We need to be rooted. You need to expand. You need to be rooted. Uh, Elder Miancy always say it here, more responsibility, more things. So you want more, you want to be a boss, headache. Amen? You want to be, so you need to be sure. You want to start a business, you need to be sure that it's in me. I'm feeling it, God has given me, so that no matter what happened, 
you stand firm. Hallelujah. You don't move. You wait for the promise. You are sure the one who has spoken the word will accomplish it. A man with God is the majority. Hallelujah. God will change the law for you. God will change things for you. Hallelujah. To conclude, I want just to to give us just three. Is it too long? Are you tired? <laughs> to conclude, I want to give us three bases. Basics that are called a foundation. Amen. Before to go for more, before to look for more. It's just three things that I was thinking about it. I think it's important. Something sometimes you are you are not you feel that you are turning around. It is it's a vicious circle because you have not understood some key, some small principle that I want to talk about it. I don't say that it's an all, but I wanted to speak about it before to conquer, before to increase, before to go. Uh, in that level. The first one I was saying is you need to put God first in all you're doing, in your decision. Good, put God first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all will be added to you without being too spiritual eh? in that verse. It's just about putting God first. Hallelujah. What you are doing, is it pleasing to God? What you are doing, God is approving it. Hallelujah. You are making major decisions of your life without consulting God. Put God first. There is also in the promise, there is also a timing. Hallelujah. Put God first. Make sure that God is glorified in what you are doing. Make sure that God found his counts. Make sure that you are with God. You are not by yourself. Put God first. Don't do things by self-ambition. Don't do things to prove to people. Don't do things to show off. Don't do things to avenge yourself. I will prove them. They will see. God is not with you. In that conquering plan, God is not with you. Make sure that you have, you don't have wrong motives. Amen. Put God first in whatever you are doing. You can prosper. Without God. But us as a Christian, what we are looking for is the blessing of God that make rich and is not follow with sorrow. That's what we are after. Something coming from God that will be sustained with life, with time. No matter the season, no matter the storm. The president here come, the other one go and everything, you are still there. That is the blessing of God. Amen. You are scared, hey, the power is here. Oh, the power is off. Oh, we are now in power. Oh, we are kicked off of power. Because, <laughs> because we need us, we need the blessing of God. No, no matter who is president. Amen. No matter the economic situation, the blessing of God lasts. Sustain is with time. No matter what they say. I was saying, you remember the story of the, the widow with um, um, a wheat and oil. She said, that's all I have. I'm going to prepare it, eat it all during the famine and die. But the prophet said to him, prepare for me first. That is cruel, isn't it? I said to you that I'm just dying. It's all I have. But he said, prepare for me. It's not about and your eyes are, give me your eyes. Are no, it's about putting God first. She actually put her life into the end of God. This is all I have for my kids. I put God first and God spoke a word for her. Yes, there is famine everywhere here, but you, you will not lack. She put God first. Hallelujah. She trusts God with her life. That's what it means to put God first. The second thing, principle I want to say is be faithful in little and God will give you more. The little that you have, bad manager, waster, that's you. 
complaining about the little that you have you just want more when i earn more i will do this and no faithful with the little that you have hallelujah managing well the little that you have discipline with the little that you have god see I was saying I like to say that God is a God of excellence of details. You are asking for a big house, but that small apartment that you have, eh, dirty. Everything is broken, but you want God to give you a because he's looking at you. So that small apartment that you have, you cannot take care of it. But you I remember very well. I was praying we were still in our, our small apartment. I was praying God for a big house, and the Holy Spirit told me, "Take care of what you have." Now, like I will say, I told you, right? Or is that the first service? We wait for the Holy Spirit to tell us spiritual things. Spiritual things. No, God is the God of details. There are things that He wants to adjust in your life before to give you more. He wants to teach you to be a good, a good manager. You want a house with a garden, but your small backyard in your small apartment. Eh? You don't even know how to take care of it, but you're dreaming. I will have a house with God. But God is seeing your backyard. <laughs> Amen. God knows that you won't be able to sustain it. Sometimes you are just praying, praying things, but God wants you to adjust small things. He sees how you're doing with little. How can you manage more? Amen. You see how you are wasting. How you are not you are unconscious with the little that you have. How can you trust you with more? We need to be sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit when he asks you to change small habits, small things. Amen. To budget, he told you budget, do this. Don't this, do crazy stuff, wait, do this, those small things. He's looking at you before to conquer for to give you more little you think that you cannot give a tithe of 100 you can you will be able to give a tithe of 10000 no you won't when i will have more god you will see my tithe just give me more just trust me more no 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 you won't give you faithful with 100 ah uh, he will give you more. He can trust you to give it out 10,000. Amen. The third thing, little things, basic foundation, we need to change sometime to go to our, before to increase, to go to conquer, is to be faithful with what is orders and God will give you your own. It goes a little bit the same. You are a bad employee. And tomorrow you're going to have your own business. You will reap what you sow. The people will come to, to, to work for you and will do you this. Because that's what you're doing. Faithful in what is others, God will give you your own. They cannot trust you with anything. Each time but they, they lend you something, it's broken, it's lost. It's, you, you don't know how to be faithful with things that are others. How can you ask for 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 each time they, they, they give you something, it needs to die in your hands. Your hands there, it kills things. <laughs> Faithful with what is others, God will give you yours. Hallelujah. We need to pray to God to help us for those things. To put to put God first, to be faithful in little, to um to care about what is ordered so that God can trust us. You people, when they see you, ah, no confidence in you. Troublemaker. They cannot, some people they say, when I, I, I leave this to her, I can sleep. But you, I, 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 I. when someone say, give you something, he did to turn his, his bed, he turn his bed in the morning, prah, I knew. <laughs> crisis. I knew. I knew. I, I wanted to give you that promotion, but that was the test. But I won't give you that promotion. You, won't be, you could not handle your two... What, what do you call that? in uh, Supervisor, right? Supervisor of two, three people. You can't. 
I, how do you want to be a manager? Eh? Handling hundreds? No, God will not give you. Amen. Those are things that we pray for. Promotion, manager, but you're a supervisor of two. You can't handle it. Trouble, trouble, trouble. You don't, know, you don't know how to say thank you for the people you work with. You don't know how to encourage them. Just yell at them, yell at them, yell at them. And you want to be a manager. Your boss is looking at you. He said, I wanted to retire to let my business to... Who want that blessing? <laughs> but the way I'm looking at you, hallelujah. Yes, you are negligent, you are lazy, you are a liar, they cannot trust you. You need to change those little things before to conquer big, before to step up to bigger things. The Bible says in March, Matthew 25, 21, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master happiness. Luke 16, 10, 12. Whoever can be trusted with, a, with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? This is the Bible. We like the verses, uh, are we post, but this is also the Bible. It's, it's Jesus speaking. His words are powerful. Because he says so, so it matters. Amen? Those things matter. We thank God we still have electricity. So we are at the end. I was just saying today that not everybody will conquer, will see the promised land. Caleb has a different spirit. Caleb has a different language. Now that we're speaking about conquering, you are saying, which conquest? I have not seen anything. I have prayed. Nothing is happening. Change your language. Caleb has a different spirit. Hallelujah. The promises was for everybody. But not everybody entered the promised land. You will spread out to the left. You will. I love it. You will spread out to the right. It's a promise. But first is to stretch your tent. Enlarge your tent. Lengthen your cord. Do your part. Act. Hallelujah. Do something. Can we all stand? I'm sure it's happened to you. We know this verse, right? Do you know how we pray this verse? We say, God, enlarge me. God, stretch me. Hallelujah. Did he say, I will stretch you? Did he say, I will enlarge you? No, he said, enlarge your tents. Stretch your tent curtain. Strengthen so it's up to you. But him, he said, you will spread to the, uh, the left and the right. That is part. But your part, don't pray anymore. God, enlarge me. No. You enlarge. God, stretch me. No. Stretch yourself. I want you to pray for your life. I talk about capacity. How big is your God? I was saying in the first service, God did not shrink. God did not change. We read about what happened in the Bible, in the Old Testament, as if it was the gold of that time. Oh, that God was big, eh? Wow, that God was great. But my Bible says I'm God and change not. Still the same, what he did yesterday, is willing and able to do it today. Can you pray for yourself? Father, help me. Forgive me. I was waiting, sitting, praying, fasting, but I understand that I need to stretch. I need to do something. Reba, shake. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. The grace, 
This message came out with a grace. This message came out. Can you just grasp it? Can you take for more capacity now by the Holy Spirit? Your eyes is opening now. You see what God is waiting for you. You see what God has installed for you. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. See big, stretch, do something. Change, live for others. Hallelujah. Reba sheta, raba sata, basheta. Maybe you have been trying, you have been trying. But I want to tell you to stay in your faith. Stand firm in your faith. Stand firm in your faith. Strengthen your stakes. You are about to spread to the right. You are about to spread to the right. But you need to stand firm in your faith. You need to change your language. Reba said it's the will of God to see you prosper, to see you move forward. It's the will of God. Reba Sheka Rababa. I want you to pray for your family, your small family, your larger family. Say, God, more for my family. We want to conquer. I'm sure you have more for my family. I'm sure you have more. Father, I was saying it's finished. I was saying it's too late. I was saying things don't change in my family. But now I understand that the promise is for me. The prophecy is for me. Father, do it for my family. Father, remember my brothers. Remember my sisters. Father, remember my parents. It's not too late for them to be saved. It's not too late for my father. It's not too late for my mother. It's not too late for my brother to change around his life. He's in drug. He's in womanizing. He's drinking too much. He's smoking too much. But it's not too late. It's not too late. I want us to pray for the church. Reba sata ba sheka rababa. Hey, mama, as a church, we pray that God help us to stretch. We need to stretch. Oh, help us to see far. He said, ask of me and I will give you nation. The end of the earth. Father, we refuse to be comfortable. We want to stretch. Oh, we refuse to be comfortable. We want to reach out more. We refuse to be comfortable. We want to go beyond the four walls. We want things to be comfortable. We want to expand. Help us, oh God. The faith that we need to step up. The faith that we need to act on our faith. Help us, God. Thank the Lord. He has hurt you. He is faithful. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Believe that he's going to do it for you. Believe that he's going to do it for you.